I'm curious to ask you about the progression of the loads. So we know that isometric is very common. Everybody knows how to do it, concentric sure. and progress load. And yeah. then like when you go to a centric and then you need to progress, if the patient, for example, is very chronic, just uh, feels pain after like running on the anterior tibialis, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you can find any resistant movement that, that uh, provokes pain. And then you believe that's a contractual dysfunction. So how do you how do you progress on these cases that you need a lot of load? So that's just uh, just a recent patient that I had that I just it's just in my mind. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking like in this example and in other uh, cases that we need a lot of load, yeah, eccentric load to yeah. to find the the pain. So you. how do you progress that? Like how do you what what is your rationale there and when it's not very common places yeah right. that is not like very well known like your uh, your heel or your you know your elbow shoulder right. like some different uh area so how do you progress that so i mean if you can't if you can't produce it in the clinic then even if you try i don't know here you eccentric uh, you, you, you do your toe lifts with body weight you know single stance toe lifts with, with uh, body weight and, and you add some weights to it and you still can't reproduce it. It's maybe because you need to, to have that person, let's say it's, it's worth running, right? That they would uh, get the, the, their pain. Maybe that needs to be their remodeling program because you, mm -hmm. you simply can't reproduce the symptoms any other way. So, um, I mean, I would try to get them started on a remodeling program that you can uh, quantify a little better, but if you really yeah. can't do that and it's, and it's after 20, 30 minutes of running and that's, that's the only time that they would feel it and their, their daily activities, they'd be totally fine. Then maybe it's cause they need to do that activity and progressively, let's say, let's say it starts at 20, 30 minutes. Okay. And, 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 and they finish their, their, um, their run, they come back home. It doesn't hurt anymore. And the next day they're not worse. Well, maybe you got to keep doing that, you know, and progressively you start, if it's 20, 30 minutes and you start to add, you know, either a few minutes at a time and up to the point where there's going to be a limit, right? And the limit is pretty much when, when the next morning you're, you're, you're sore and, and painful, swollen, maybe if, if that's the case, then you know where the limit is right now. And you just got to start where it doesn't, where, where that reaction doesn't happen and slowly work your way up. So in that particular yeah. case, I think, I think that's what I would do. Uh, I don't, uh, if you're telling me you can't really reproduce it any other way, I might, I might give it a try anyways with um, uh, weight bearing uh, toe lifts on one leg and maybe holding, uh, putting a backpack on with 20, 30 pounds. But if that has no effect on their, um, on their pain when they're running, then it's, uh, it's maybe because it's the wrong loading strategy. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I haven't thought about using the the the, the activity, activity itself that's to remodel. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, oh, it's, well, it's, that was... it's because people, you know, the contractile dysfunctions and, and even some derangement. They they if they keep active, they can. Some people can self reduce and self remodel. You know, and they yeah. may not get it to a hundred percent, but they, if they keep active, then that tissue is going to remodel itself to a certain point. And so, yeah, they, 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 um, they, and, and they haven't necessarily given it a, you know, a, a, an exercise protocol, uh, a progressive remodeling exercise program to, uh, to do that. They just continue to do their physical activity. And so, um, it's, it's, it's a question of loading, right? Yeah, no, that makes totally sense. And and what do you think about the the eccentric movements with load? So if you if you need, how do you progress? So do you start, for example, in that case, the example that I gave you, um, I thought about doing uh, the normal movements, um, dog gravity seating, doing the resistance movement with the bands. Yeah. um inversion uh, the RC flexion and then trying to resist them 
right. um, to get the centric. So if that doesn't work, so how do you progress? Like how do you, what is your rationale on trying to progress the load on eccentric movements? Um, uh, I think, I think you're right in, in a sense that um, there's a, uh, there's a, um, it's like a level system where the, the isometrics is at the bottom and uh, you start adding load to it, whether it be concentric or eccentric, but then you, people shouldn't forget that there's, there's higher, there's, there's plyometrics, right? And so if you've gotten to the point where you, you've done concentric, eccentric, and you, and you really get them to, um, to, to contract and it's in, you're having trouble, again, reproducing symptoms or getting them to improve with that kind of load, it's maybe because you have to add a speed component to it, right? So yeah. um, I don't know how you would necessarily, well, I guess you can get them to do it with just faster. If you're, if you're talking about the same exercise where you uh, wrap a TheraBand around their ankle, get them to do dorsiflexion and inversion and um, resist it and just get them to do it quickly. That might be the key to what you, uh, to, to the rest of the remodel.